What is up, boys and girls? It's your boys from the Shock the World podcast. I'm Harold Eason here in the studio with the regular guys. Hey, I'm Chris Gervasio. Oh, hey. Hey, how are you? He's regular. I was like, I'm just going to introduce myself. Yeah, special guest. Guest in the studio today. And then uh, our usuals. Uh, Jameson Widener. You got to be happy, Jameson Widener. Well, the boys across the street. The The boys put in some real work, unlike Thursday. Yeah. Craig DeMundo. Tim Hanna, ready to hit the road for a long week of work. <laughs> yeah. There you can't go. wait. It's going to be a great Louisiana. week. Lovely. Beautiful Louisiana. <laughs> well, cool. So, you know, we're sitting here recording on Sundays. It feels like there's been a, a kind of a brush of, breath of fresh air as opposed to the emotions on Friday and Saturday. Um, we were you know, I think that might be because the Astros won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, we're a couple of days removed from it. Yes. yes. Usually this wasn't if, last we, night. if we take an L recording the next day, it still stings a lot It's a more. beating, man. We're in there. Yeah. We're sitting, you know, the night before. I mean, you guys can see this is a daytime podcast. We haven't done one of these in a long time. Yeah. yeah. It feels good. Um, it does feel good. <laughs> we are back. Yeah. We are back. <laughs> um, but we're here to, um, you know, talk about the Memphis game. But we also want to talk about our man, Chris. So, Chris comes in from uh, the Coot Crew. Why don't you tell us yeah. a little bit about your involvement um, with, well, I guess, how did you become a U of H fan? How did you Im- immerse yourself into the Cougar world and sort of go from there? Sure, yeah. So uh, I'm a current student, uh, grad student at U of H. I'm cool. a master's of accounting student. So for That's... people, it's it's riveting. I mean, accounting, man, it's just, <laughs> yeah. accounting is yeah. everyone's dreams. Like I remember in high school, people were like, oh my God, accounting? Like, man, I'm so jealous. Like, so that's, you're definitely like one of those closet, like Ben Affleck guys. Like you absolutely. could leave right here and just annihilate all of us. It, I, there you no, go, man. That's okay. how I spend my free I, time. When I took accounting in college, I wanted to blow my head off. <laughs> I loved accounting, <laughs> man. So pro- Honestly, so I really, like, really liked accounting. It was, really, it was a weird situation. Like yeah. totally hated math, but as soon as you started talking money, I was like about it. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, Shocker. Shocker. Absolutely. Shocking. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe it just wasn't taught to you in the proper. I once taught a friend of mine how to do life on FIFO based off like a keg and like where you could put a tap in a keg, and that's how I taught the <laughs> idea. Of, yeah, so I just try like make it wait, relatable wait, the, to people. Love, lo, what was LIFO it? and FIFO. Oh, yeah. in first last inventory. In, last in, last in first out. out oh, first in first see, out. I'm not. I'm not. And how you do pricing single right now? Yeah. No, so I only just, know that that's a logistics thing too. You got, you, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You, you just gotta figure out how to make it relatable. Um, yeah. awesome. So, but no. So what Ku Crew is is we are the official student like hype and pride section for university yeah uh, our goal is just to get more students out not only to football games but just to uh basketball games volleyball games uh tennis track and field honestly if it's on campus in the spring which it is uh baseball and softball i mean it's yeah. just yeah. about uh kind of our motto it's if you wear houston on your chest we should be out as students supporting you like that's our job okay. right that's I totally that's agree that part of building a better culture on campus as part of building uh better student involvement yep um and so that's kind of been our passion we're restarting so i'm not really a founder but more of a sure. restarter. Okay. Um, it kind of fizzled out a little bit on campus. Uh, and now we, a couple of students have gotten together and said, Hey, like we want to do this again. We want to, we want to do it, you know, bigger. We want to make sure that students actually know about what's going on on campus. Cause there's just right. a lot of lack of information. I mean, yep. um, if you walk over during basketball season, you ask, Hey, like, are you going to basketball game tonight? Do you even know where a basketball game is? And they'll sure. say, no, I have no idea. You know, where wow. Hoffines is. Yeah. And right. they just have no idea. And they're like, Oh, oh then that we tell them like, Oh, you know, it's the, it's the gym. It's the garrison gym. And they're like, what, what, where Casa is? And I was like, no, not quite, <laughs> not quite Casa. but it's in the general vicinity. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's so closer. Casa still exists. Yeah, yeah Casa unfortunately oh, yeah. still exists. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, uh, it's not fun. I think I took one test there, thank oh, God. So, how did you get to U of H then? So, uh, I'm from Houston, born and raised. Right. Um, I was dead set against going to U of H in high school. I didn't even want to apply. Uh, mm-hmm. But wow. my mom went here and she's like, oh, you got to apply. Like, you just, you, you should apply. Uh, just see, you know, just see what happens, like, just in case you don't get it anywhere else. And she's sure. like, I know you're going to get it everywhere else. Like I got into other schools in Texas. I came from a college prep school and I was very well prepared, thankfully. But uh, it wasn't until I stepped onto U of H campus, which my mom forced me uh, to go to. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, wow, I love this place. Like I love the people. Uh, I liked the feel. I, I felt like this this university just felt like I, I mattered. It cool. wasn't a number. I wasn't you know someone who yeah. just wanted to. It wasn't a grad mill, but it was a place where I felt like I, I, right. I mattered, uh, which is cool. So, but that would have been what year? Two thousand. Uh, two thousand twelve. Two thousand twelve. Yeah. Yeah, so, so they were doing the UC at that point. They were redoing the UC. They were redoing. Yes, yeah. so my freshman okay. year. So we still had Robertson then. 
Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yes. my my freshman year, no, my freshman year when I came on, so I was 2013 when I first came. Oh, so you're the NRG year. Right. So I was at NRG oh, okay. year. So that's okay. when I first started my football season and I would drive over to NRG. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't that into it. I mean, driving to NRG, especially as a freshman, it it's like, we yeah. talked about that a couple episodes ago. Yeah. It just, it, just it, it, it wasn't, of, yeah, it just, it wasn't It's not fun. college football. It, it, yeah. It's, yeah. it's really not. So, uh, my freshman year, I was, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't that involved in sports. And sure. then my sophomore year, I was kind of like iffy. Uh, but that's what I would say. My real kind of interest was during the armed forces bowl, okay. uh, that year where yep. I sat in the freezing rain in Dallas, well, I guess Dallas, Fort Worth, but, uh, sat in the freezing rain with my buddies. Yeah, I was about to and, correct you there, buddy. Yeah, sorry. So, <laughs> oh my God. Was, we were all there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we it stayed. Miserable. It was miserable. And I was like, why am I still here? And it wasn't until those last six minutes. And I was like, this is why I'm still here. And this is why I'm a kook fan. And after that, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. I'm on the hype train. I'm on the hype train <laughs> the entire way. And that's, of course, The hype when, train rolled on for a long time. Everybody yeah. has yeah. one of those moments, right? Yeah. Everybody has that sort of, if you're as diehard like all of us, there's that clicking sort of like emotional feeling like you just like fell in love for the first time and you're like, right. I'm hooked. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. So you just, you, you just got to fall through some sort of barrier there. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. I've had U of H break my heart many, a many time. That is true. <laughs> yeah. It's hard being a Cougar fan. <laughs> it's cardiac Cougars, it's right? Tough. It exactly. gives you a harder workout. You just got to be a realist. Okay. Every year, even okay, our best years, I'm serious. I know you, you have to realize that there's going to be some bad it's right. always yeah. gonna be good. So you just gotta you gotta keep with it. No, I'm gonna oh, yeah. be Bama. Okay. <laughs> well <laughs> and, and nobody, short life, my friend. <laughs> nobody beating life. them this year. When you have Alabama booster money, then you can maybe set those expectations, okay? So I mean yeah. uh, they raise they they raise more money for Nick Saban's contract than we raise for Cougar Pride in an entire fiscal year. All right. I that. believe that. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool, man. So, like, tell us a little bit, like, on a day-to-day basis, what being a part of the organization looks like. So, I guess, your role specifically? So, I'm president. Uh, so, I'm president and kind of the head honcho in terms of... Commander-in-chief? Commander-in-chief, yeah. Okay. Kind of organizing, figuring out where we're kind of going this semester. Okay. okay. Um, so, a lot but of... You're, like, you're not orange. Very nice. I'm not. I'm not. I'm for, no, have, I'm Hispanic. I, I was... Yeah, wow. I, I know, right? Woo. <laughs> I was. I, I'm the future, right? Okay. This is what. This is what we. This is when in grade school I was told what was going to happen. Was we were all going to be like diverse and. That, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, so a day to day life. I mean, honestly, it, it circles around athletics. So, to, I mean, to this very morning, I set up a tailgate. Uh, for soccer, and we cool. were tailgating for the soccer the last home game of the season. Uh, when I checked my phone, we're we're doing really hot this game. I yeah. mean, we were up four to one last I checked, uh, and we were t- we tailgating for soccer and volleyball. And cool. volleyball, we swept. I mean, we we killed it. The girls did really really well. Who do you play? Uh, we played USF. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, so we did, we did really well. But I mean, so a lot of it, it's just that it's having tailgates for the games that are going on, and then going to the games trying to hype it up, having cheers and whatnot. Um, we've had a lot of really great interest from freshmen actually and so a lot of freshmen really bought into it yeah so that's that's what our our goal was yeah our goal was just to build it for the future um and then other other days it we are a service organization so we go out and volunteer we were helping uh coach sampson with the boxes that were coming in uh from the donations for harvey we were helping there with all the student athletes and stuff uh we have a lot of socials we do um, a lot of part of it too is that we're trying to travel. We're traveling to away games, so we're planning on traveling to the LSU game and uh, to the A and M game for women's basketball, and seeing depending on how bowl games line up and whatnot, if we can travel or do a watch party or something like that. Sure. Um, so it's really just figuring out ways to support and hype athletics, and then connecting with them. So having inviting athletics to come volunteer with us, uh, student athletes and stuff like that, and really trying to tell, let students know like these are people who you're going to see in classes. These are people you get yep. to meet and talk to and be your friends, and they're not you know. Some some, I mean, I mean, they're not some people that you should just look at from afar through like a, a glass window, and Definitely. that's it, right? And that and that helps, I think, students feel more connected to the sport and feel like they right. really can have an impact on the sport. Of course, great. cool. I think one of the things that uh, tie people to university is the the connection of feeling like they belong. Yeah, and especially when you have a team to root for, you know, I mean, th- think of every single like UH alumni that you know yeah. that is like, oh, yeah, I went to U of H, like, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I don't care. It's because they didn't care about the sports right, teams. Right, right. And 
typically those people are kind of like fairy dust. You don't really care about them anymore. Uh, Personally, dust yeah. doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a fugazi. It's a fugazi. It's a woozy. It's a wazi. I mean, those, those are the people who you just kind of like, oh, like a small little print. Like, I went to U of H. Yeah. Not like the bold. Yeah. Like, I went to U of H. Exactly. And I'm doing this, this, and this. Or the small print. Like, yeah, I went to U of H. And so that's cool. I think what you guys are doing with going after freshmen when they're first on campus, because, you know, a, a lot of kids, like from U of H, I'd say probably a, an enormous percent still come from the H- greater Houston oh, area. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. you also have, I mean, th- those are people who maybe, you know, Houston is so big, you might not know somebody from the south side of town right. or the north side of town or the east or west or something like that. Right. And so you're meeting all these new people. You have this new way that, oh, I want to come in. I want to be like involved in like something. supporting yeah. something. Exactly. It gives them that sort of that ability. And if you want to branch off from, from other places, you sort of have a home base to sort of come and support your UH, you know, stuff. I know like, uh, when we were all in the social, uh, organization in co- uh, college, we would all go to basketball games because right. one of our really good friends played Kirk fans like played basketball. Oh, awesome. And so we would always go, uh, support him and a couple of the other guys that we knew. And in the same way, I, I really like the way that you guys are, are, sort of pushing that on the younger guys so that you have you basically build an arsenal because at some point right. it, it's kind of a moot cause coming to the sophomores although you you seem to be a sort of proving the difference uh, a bit, but yeah. you know you, it's hard to get those folks who are already in their set in stone right. uh, to change their minds so, right yeah. um, no and I, I agree awesome. especially with our university's demographics I mean not everyone's gonna be a football fan and that's great right that's fine because we, we you know we went and talked to international student organizations that hey you know so, uh, soccer's on campus if you sure. really like if you like soccer if you if there's other, there's other sports out there for not everyone yeah. I mean my girlfriend she played tennis varsity tennis all four years of high school and so that was part of the reason why we were like okay we're gonna go out to the tennis matches and so yeah you know last season we had at the end of the season almost 20 people going out to these tennis matches and that's all awesome. really great time and stuff but you know that that's when you you know you meet Toma Fertitta, you meet Hunter Juracek, and that's mm-hmm. they're just walking by at these random athletic events, and that's when networking happens. But there's something out here for everyone at this university. It's just a matter of yeah. you're right, grabbing on hold of them and saying, "Hey, like you can be involved in this, and you can still make all your other commitments happen too." Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Do well, you guys have any other questions for him? You got a question? Uh, yeah, I think I think we talked off air, but so what's like the general feeling with the students now compared to? Well, I guess you can compare it to 2014 or 2013 right. per se, but what's the general feel with you know everyone now with the way their games are going? Because we saw like you know students leaving in the third quarter of Memphis yeah. and all that. Like, is it just compared to last year? Is it like is the? I mean, are we deflated or what's hmm. going on? <laughs> yeah, so I think I'll, I'll give two responses. One, like the short term from last year, I think we're a little deflated. I think also. I mean, I'm not sure. I would want to go see back from last year and stuff, but I feel like our students were still leaving in like the third, fourth quarter, even yeah. when there were yeah. good games. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I feel like there were. So maybe, maybe it wasn't Louisville, but yeah. it was other games where our oh, students sure. would still leave or we would have stuff happen and like our students wouldn't show up. Uh, I think, I don't remember which game it was after we had we lost to SMU, but I think we had, oh, oh gosh, like 1,300 students. Was it? it was a... Uh... It was, Ooh, I don't know. UCF was bad after we lost to yeah yeah. Was it Memphis or uh, Navy? Navy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Navy. And it was yeah. a hot, really sweaty, bad. delay game for like that's right. Three hours. That's right. Maybe that was, yeah. Lamar. Yeah. That was Lamar. That was Lamar, Lamar after yeah. OU. That was OU. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. No, there was one that we was a, it was a thunderstorm delay, but that so, was Lamar. Uh, so okay, Lamar. okay, yeah. So I mean, I, I think our students as a whole, right? They just don't have the culture of we're gonna sit here and wait yeah. for the game to go on. Right? They they, they yeah. just don't. They don't. I don't think there's enough fo- like focus. I think on teaching our students to appreciate the alma mater and like appreciate like staying for the game, having the like students, the student athletes come up and like you mm-hmm. know say hi and stuff like that. I think our students just don't care about that. They've they sat through a whole tailgate. They sat through a whole that, and they're just we're not that university yet. I think yeah, yeah. That our students just have that dedication. Got to say we're a whole lot better than we were though. Uh-oh. Right, right, and, and that's what that was gonna be, that was going to yeah. be my second part. Is that from when I first started here uh, in 2013, 2014, I would say our student section is much better i think oh, student yeah. overall yeah. university and student student involvement but the student section is just so much better sure, i mean sure. we actually have filled stands and we have relative student uh, interaction between the cheerleaders and the yeah. football team and mm-hmm. stuff i think there are tweaks and stuff and we need to work harder on teaching our fans maybe proper fan etiquette sometimes maybe not um, throwing stuff on the field maybe, maybe not throwing stuff on the field uh, would be a good start. Uh, yeah that, that'd be a really nice start um, and then <laughs> it's 
there, there are stuff, spaces. Yeah, like there's just there's just stuff that we can work on as a fan base, but I think this is so much better than what it was in 2013, 2014, uh, I, I either way. I totally so, agree. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Tim? I don't have any questions. I mean, I think you kind of covered everything, kind of what y'all want to accomplish, where y'all have come from, yep. what you're doing yeah. to get there. So hats off to you, my man. Best question yeah. for uh, last I'll ask you is where can everybody find maybe yourself? If you want to go ahead and plug yourself or the organization overall? Sure, yeah. So uh, you can find Coo Crew on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, all at Coo Crew UH. We're all over the place there. Uh, and then if you want to get more involved with us, there is uh, kukru.org. Uh, if you're an alumni who want, wants to figure out how to get involved with more students on campus, you can get involved that way. If you want to maybe sponsor uh, as a you have your own business that's trying to reach out to more students. If you're an alumnus who wants to hire more Cougs, because that's <laughs> what we should always be doing course, is hiring yeah. more Cougs. Um, we, we have something for everyone to be involved. Uh, so it's kukru.org. You can look at ways to get involved with us. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Well, in that case, we very much appreciate it, and uh, we'll probably tie into some other things later on. Well, so and hey, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm really honored yeah, to be here. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah. You're sticking this uh, sticking Memphis, uh, L. Yeah, so yeah. You're sticking, you're sticking with us on this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so with that, we'll go ahead and jump into our lovely Thursday night game, U of H versus Memphis. Memphis wins 42 to 38, all 42 of those points coming in the second half. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and start off, I guess, with the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, with the ugly. What's good? Um, there are some good points. <laughs> there are some good Whatever, takeaways. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure about that. So, um, defense of the second half. I think, minus, that's our, I think that's our biggest ugly. Yeah. It has to be. Oh. It's it, like the, it, it the was one very, right. ugly. It was very well, strange. Our defense in the second half has been saving us the last, you know, every other game. Play yeah. not to lose. Our, huh? Play not to lose. Yeah. Zone coverage, D'Onofrio, Miami people were right, dude. Like, that was when he showed – that was his – oh, man. I don't, we also didn't have Matt but Adams. But 42 points second half, you sit in zone coverage. But I, to go on top of that, it's, it's something we've talked about before. Ben, don't break. No, not even that. But Our quarterback play. Oh, yeah. No. Our quarterback play, we went three and out. Okay, we got it's the, the two touchdowns. The offense doesn't help. No, no, but. I know, but, but it's like we talked with George Bamfo. He said, if you can't get in a rhythm and the offense isn't doing what they're doing, then you're trying to do too much and the mistakes happen. Mistakes happen. Like a 76-yard yeah. yeah, return. But, but here's the bad thing, too. You can't sit in zone defense all no, second I, half I, I totally and not agree. get any pressure on the quarterback because Riley Ferguson and their receivers are good enough to where he can buy some time and they're going to get open. Yeah, We did. Yeah, well, there was some times where we flushed him out of the pocket, but Riley Ferguson is that good of a quarterback That's to make plays He's on good. his foot. I know. He's good. On his feet, should I say. But, yeah. I mean, you look at it. We went punt, two touchdowns. Fumble, touchdown, punt, fumble, interception. Like, you're not going to get any rhythm, any help from your defense at all if that's that's your offensive series. We still like scored three touchdowns. And that's actually a good that I point. I would, I would agree. <laughs> that we scored 21 well, that's points That's shocking in the to me, yeah. actually. Yeah. We scored just as uh, – this, this is tied for the highest scoring game of the year, correct? Yeah. So 38, 38 points. Yeah, oh, wow. we had 38 against Rice. Dude, Memphis, like, oh, my gosh. Touchdown. Kickoff, touchdown, 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 touchdown. Punt. They found their rhythm. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah, they found their rhythm. Coaching. It really is coaching, man. It is. And we'll, we'll, we'll hold off that. and get oh. on to odds and ends. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, let's cruise. Uh, Postuma, more turnovers, man. Two fumbles, a touchdown, and an interception. Yeah, I mean, the, those are... <sighs> they were bad. The two fumbles were bad. Bad. Mm -hmm. okay. They were really bad. Really stupid. He should be sliding, but he's fighting for extra yards because he's trying to do more. We're trying and to do more. And it's putting, put us, putting us yes. in terrible positions. Yeah. Overall, cannot have mostly that. all of his turnovers is like just do less. Exactly. Overall, <laughs> overall, <laughs> overall, I think uh, we need to put the boy Allen back in. That's my my two cents. Mm. Um, um, I was wondering what you were saying overall. I thought you were going to wrap that segment up. I know. Yeah. I was wondering what you were saying overall yeah. for. Just speaking on postman quarterbacks. Um, that's just oh god. That's and then like, the last is probably the most like triggering one that we could possibly talk about. Not going for it on the fourth. There's Ooh. this has been an entire season. Yeah. We went for it in. Worst spots, yeah, in oh, random and weird in occasions, like occasions the first in the, uh, in the Tulsa game, and the game. Like, yeah, yeah, and then when it really mattered, and then fourth and one, you. But going back, if you're coaching, you see they've had what five straight touchdowns at that yeah. point. Exactly. Why not go for it and kill the game off? It's it's like the it's like the argument I get into my dad Why? with at the casino. If you're playing blackjack, <laughs> you're not supposed to no, listen. Listen, it's a good analogy. Okay. There we go. If you're sitting at, Buckle you know, up. 12, 13, you probably shouldn't hit unless the dealer's showing low. Then you've got a pretty good chance. Yeah. yeah. My dad on one hand is like, 
don't hit. Don't hit. Let him decide it. I'm like, no, I want to decide my own fate. I want to go down swinging. Sure. If I bust, I bust. So yes. be it. Yeah. And I think that's the same scenario that, that he did. Oh, because for sure. we don't necessarily know. Because what that was, like, if I remember, not the greatest punt either. No, it wasn't. Um, no. Some are saying and it might have been trying to be a fake punt and it got botched. And that's why it looked like a crappy punt. I've heard too, but dude, I don't even care. Fourth and inches, and you see it, there's line and they, yeah. what they've accomplished that whole what second they're half, doing oh. what they were doing they were scoring at will yeah. oh yeah why yeah. yeah and after even last year they scored in 30 seconds we after we had the lead why punt the football win the game Here, right then and there yep. here's another weird part you know with the trend of them getting better in the second half i'm actually really stunned about the people leaving the game as that was going on it was like we were dominating in the first half and you know typically you would think that you're sitting there in the stands, and Memphis is eking back. I'm like planted. That's where it was at. So, oh, okay, that was that. Was that. All right, that's where we needed fans. But at. see, that's, you got to remember, so, you got to remember yeah, a lot of the casual needed. fans that we want to be there. They don't think Memphis is a powerhouse. That's, they think Memphis, that's what it they is, think, man. They think Memphis yeah. is just another crappy. It's a Thursday school. night. It's not Louisville. It's right. not. Yeah. It, even UConn last in last year when we were still number six in the country was spotty. Yeah. At times. Yeah. It's all about who it is. That's why. I'm, yeah. Until, we need to play name regional teams. I know we can't do anything about conference. We but can't we need do anything to play, about regional. No, no, no. I mean. I literally just said we can't do anything about our conference. Right. But out of yeah. conference, you have to play regional. Well, out of there's, conference, There's yes. too much risk for that. Yeah, but yeah. there's a difference yeah. between playing regional as in like Rice. And even though I, I want to play Rice every year because of the Houston rivalry, but there's a yeah. difference between playing them and like a Georgia Southern. No, regional, like a and like that. UTSA. TSU? UTSA. Scheduling UTSA and Rice is different than scheduling, you know, like someone like Baylor or TCU. Or, oh, you know. well, yeah. We'll see how UTSA yeah. is. They I don't, don't think their coach us, is going to stay there for much longer. No, I think he's, I think he's gone. Five job They're four and two. I think they're gone pretty, pretty soon. Who? Frank uh, Wilson uh, with UTSA. Exactly. Oh, you think he's going to get picked up by somebody? Oh, yeah. Um, next, I guess we'll talk about the bad. The boy, Duke Catalan. Continues to be underwhelming. Major is just riding him until the kid just spontaneously combusts. His yards per carry are is just not there. Three. He's he's he, good for three yards. I, that's what every I, game. That's what I've, I've every said. Every game, yeah. the last average of three yards. Um, he did get three touchdowns though. Yeah, because they yeah. were within the five yard line. <laughs> so <laughs> can we just bring Mike Hayes back? I would love. And the for problem that. is uh, nobody knows what's going on with Burden. No, there's been right. nothing uh, addressed about Burden. We will probably won't find out until tomorrow or Tuesday. So, from what a friend told me on TV that wasn't able to move the game, like his elbow was literally like on yeah. the other side. They said that gone. the elbow was like it's not elbows aren't yeah. supposed to do that. Yeah, like well, broken or dislocation or something. Like it's yeah. it's not good. You know, Greg Ward saying like I'm praying for you, bro, on Twitter. Like you know, it's bad. So here's another oh, one. Yeah, bad. Why, when he goes out, do we not try to throw somebody else in and just force? Duke Cattle on to do the same thing over and over again. Stubbornness and conservatism. That's coaching. Confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Confidence in what your players can do. Are we really that unconfident in Mulba Car? Yes. Yeah. yes. Yep. Our coaching staff is really that unfaithful with everybody else. Yep. And that's scary. It's kind of like what Herman was saying about our wide receivers when he first got here. Yep. It's same thing. Same situation. Exact same thing. In, in turn, then, it's their job to coach them up that they should be at a better level. Well, maybe there's not what we thought they were. Maybe that's true. One I of think the mobile car is good, but for whatever reason, in crucial times in the game, they don't trust him with the ball in a crucial moment. Yeah. yeah. Good point. So, next, um, gave up 93 yards. That was the saddest part of the game. That was so sad. The tackling was horrible on that. That was really bad. Uh, The worst tackling I've seen this happen. We haven't had this bad of tackling in... No, we'll go every couple years and we'll have bad tackling. Um, But the problem, like, I don't think it's necessarily like... uh, I don't think it was just a tackling issue on that one. I think we just got caught sleeping. I think we were at, in the second half going through the motions. Oh, I do too. And just kind of like. Because our coaching staff has no fire. They can right. sit there and have the most rowdy sideline that we want to on kickoffs, squirting water bottles everywhere, which it is <laughs> fun. one kid cool. going, it's awesome. <laughs> the, the ball Please boys and the too. trainers yeah. got more fire Woo! than our coaching staff, and that pisses me off. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. I. I well, no, there's sometimes Major looked really pissed off. Actually, I will say this. We did see I did see Major him. run down the sideline after yeah. Garrett Davis got that pick, and then we settled for a field goal and yep. got our 15. 
Yeah. That's when you can kill the game off. And I'm sick and tired of hearing Major, well, we had the game. We're up 14. We could have gone in 21 and nothing had happened. We didn't do it. We heard it from the Temple game. Yeah. We heard it from yeah. uh, what other games? Tulsa. 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 We could have gone this Rice. before the half. We could have done this before Memphis. Yeah. Like, I'm sick and tired of it, man. It's up to you to make the Georgia Make some McCall. heads roll or your head's going to roll, yeah. brother. Like, woo, <laughs> woo. <laughs> Chill, Rick. Regardless. All right, all right, like, all right Reddick. No, for real, it, it, I'm tired of it. I don't even want to watch this post-game BS anymore because it's typical coach speak it, over and over again. It's the same thing. Get your team in line. I was actually – I thought, you know, after the Texas Tech game that we we all went to the coaches' game and then they – you know, it's changed a little bit. He sounded fiery wise. then. I he mean, sounded fiery, but where is it at after that? I like him as a person. I like him. But I want more. Need more. I'm tired of getting out coached. That tweet Duarte put out, 80 points in the second half against Tulsa and Memphis combined, almost 700 yards total offense, and U of H was leading at the half of both of those games. Mm-hmm. And then 11 out of 13 drives. I remember all this. It's how much it pisses me off. Yeah. 11 out of 13 drives combined in the second half were touchdowns. That's that uh, is that is out coached to the T. So we have a defense problem. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. It's not even that. It's offense too. Yeah. yeah. We've got everything isn't putting problem. on board. Yeah. Putting up yeah. points and they're going three and out a lot. Yeah. A lot. And we're, but the problem is we're we're going three and out. We're not even moving the ball. No. We're it's like not even less than we're not advancing how many, the ball. How many sacks do we have in the first half against Memphis? We put some pressure on Raleigh first. We did. We did. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. I got a lot of tackle for. And loss. then the second half, it was it was basically just saying nothing. we're just waiting back here for you. Yeah. Just, just come at us. Yeah. And I'm I can't like I'm over it. <laughs> Sorry, random. Next, <laughs> you're good. I think it's uh, you know, well, uh, well talked about. And to your point, Memphis had 471 yards receiving. <sighs> yeah, um, uh, we knew that was how they were going to beat us, though. Right, but that was that's still but that's really how you score 42 game. points and a half. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the do. good on the flip side, we did hold Memphis to only 30 total rushing yards. I think that's a tribute to Chavis and uh, the boy uh, Thurman, Thurman, and, yeah. Dewan Hines yeah. uh, coming from the back. I mean, he had a killer game again. It's, mm-hmm. it, I wish we could have seen a little bit more from him earlier on in his career, but he's still doing a great job. Um, and it's whew. Um, next. We still did score. 21 points in the second half. Which is mind-blowing. <laughs> <That, laughs> we still lost. I think that's as, that's as many points as we've scored in the second half. All year. All year. Oh, by in far. In one game. By yeah. far. So that is – is it going to be trending to the positive with that? You I think certainly so? hope so. Oh, God. I don't know if that's going to be the truth, though. The, the problem is, like you were saying, is we're going third and out, but it's always on the first possession – and yep. we're punting, and we're not even cl- punting close to the end zone. Yeah. We're not punting deep into their territory. We're, I mean, there was a couple of them where they were, they got to the 30, 40 yard line. Yard line. Dude, yeah. I just think it's this coaching staff has no marbles. I'm with you. Uh, well, something. I, you I, it's no not marbles. I, 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 I don't know if it's not mar- marbles, but I yeah, just there's their fourth and inches. You don't go for it after they run the kickoff back. You're you're yeah. No, pooch, I, you're pooch kicking kickoffs. And you're giving them, 20 yeah, that was yards. bad. That was that, was, that I did. Uh, that is that, that I did is, not understand. I will. I want to say one. I'm not going to do it. It's, I'm done. <laughs> done with this game. All done. right. So, so to expound on what you said, we yes, had four terrible. drives of 85, 80 plus yards, correct with, on the game. So that that's good. We need a yeah. lot more of that, and that's what like gives me the hope. Like, man, if we could put together just one or two more of those, like we'll yeah. be fine. We're we'll Houston. Be okay. We have more talent than. 90% Anybody else of this conference? No, we should be putting together four drives at eighty-five plus yards. No, I agree, and that's one. That of shouldn't the be things. shocking. This yeah. is this is already an embarrassing season. We have more talent <laughs> so than we have a winning record, but uh, yeah, still, we have still a winning record still barely. We're about to lose three straight for the first time. We're about we're about yeah. to have an even record. <laughs> Probably, oh, unfortunately, <laughs> we'll talk about that in the next episode. Yeah. So overall, odds and ends. Uh, one of the cool things, the boy Paul Wall came out and yeah. Uh, yeah. Opened up on the uh, the uh, the team to come out and uh, that was pretty tough. That was pretty cool. He had a seven one three jersey. That was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. of course. 
<laughs> it was Shocker. lit. It was, lit. It was he was like he was on the microphone in like the hallway or the tunnel, and they were oh, walking out. That was, it was pretty legit. It was pretty cool. It sounded yeah. really cool. I was like, "Is this the song on the stereo?" And then all of a sudden, you saw him come out. It was yeah. pretty pretty it was hype. Pretty lit. Yeah. Um, not hype enough. Um, also, one of the bummers was tailgating. Ooh. Well, tailgating for sure. Well, the UH, I mean, like you mentioned earlier, the student tailgate was pretty. Sweet. Yeah, so we got off the metro rail. We walked by the student tailgate area, yeah. and it yeah. was it was they were in there especially like for a thir- for a Thursday. Yeah, Thursday I mean, they we, were out there. I know they're not rolling. going to their classes at four o'clock. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, I'd rather be nice. there too. They were, but, they yeah. were rocking, dude. Yeah, and good then, for us. you know. We walk over to the alumni lot and. We were also in the RV lot. Nobody brought their RV. Hear my watch tick. There were zero RVs. And it's no, there just, was there was one, one. There was one. There's terrible. Normally I'm sorry. Like, there's what? two. And there's usually like terrible. five or six. It was terrible. Challenge to terrible. you guys: just take the day off. It's not that hard. Just take the day well, off. I'm taking the next day off next year, dude. Right, yeah, same. Always so take the next. Friday y'all. was That's a rookie move on y'all's part. Rookie mistake. I, I rookie can't mistake. take off in October, but it's all good. Um, <laughs> another real bummer I was bummed about was, dude. Same jerseys as the Louisville game as last year. It was a blackout. We wore gray. Money. I told y'all. I told y'all the tickets had charcoal. Right, but I don't tickets. think they were. They were the. Ex- I know we knew that, but I don't think that they were the exact yeah, they were, same they were the exact ones. Same ones. We reused oh, them. I don't, I don't know if we. They might be like new exact same ones, but they're probably exact the same, same ones. ones. You remember, we only have a certain allotment of money we can spend with Nike. Yeah, that's true. So maybe they're planning something different for Navy or for. <sighs> So homecoming, so. maybe. I'd I don't know. to see that. <laughs> Wouldn't that would be nice for <laughs> homecoming? Yeah. I think home, yeah, it'd be nice because we, hopefully we win that game. Pirate outfits, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, have some pirate hookers. I mean, at this point, yeah, should have the blackout against, against <laughs> Carolina. Against Carolina, black beard, <laughs> killing the pirates. Oh my god, <laughs> that would be awesome. And then overall attendance, man. I mean, this is a real bummer. Um, twenty five ranked, twenty well, fifth ranked. Memphis is in town, but I think yeah. it, we talked about, dude. I think our our floor is thirty thousand. Truthfully, if we get thirty thousand overall, minimal, that's where that's we're horrible. at, right? Yeah, yeah, we're like thirty thousand. Well, okay, terrible. so there's some theories that they think they flubbed the number because our total quote unquote attendance was thirty thousand and one. Come on, uh, really? You think that one person? Wait, got in? thirty thousand and one from Memphis? Yeah, that's awful. It's pretty embarrassing. But I think that's our floor. Yeah. I, I, tru- I, agree. I truthfully I think believe that really is our floor. Yeah, like I the think lowest we be, can go. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah, but which is good. However, homecoming would be. More just because it's Ooh, homecoming. Of course, it depends on how bad you this would do. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it's still it's homecoming. Usually it is still always, homecoming. Even Robertson, so, the years we have right. better attendance. So I, I think homecoming. we'll still hit thirty thousand. Yeah. If we happen to beat US, USF, maybe thirty five. Now, what's going to be considered a dead game is potentially the Navy game. I always hate no, the day. I, I don't because I think Navy, such a, yeah. I think Navy will bring their people. Yeah, yeah just like last for time. us. If there's nothing to play for, day after Thanksgiving, no, mm. I, I think we're right. fine. I think Navy, will, yeah, they just stick, with, proceed, stick to, in with their families and watch right. on TV. Yeah, well, yeah, it sucks, but that's what we had up friends happening. for the Memphis game. They were like, I guess I'll just watch from home. I mean, like, yeah, what there's, the heck? yeah, I mean, it was always difficult for me. I have to plan with my family because half my family lives up in Fort Worth. At, Everyone games knows when we, you're from on Fort Worth. Yes, well, you mentioned it every, every episode. They came when they come. They come in. To town when we play here, yeah. and when we play away, we go up to Fort Worth instead. Yeah. So we we flip flop. Yeah, yeah that's what I do. So yeah. literally just plan plan around the schedule. So you guys can do it too. Next, I guess we'll jump on to the American Conference in around the American in three hundred seconds. Biddy, 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 biddy. Uh, Tulane officially scares me. Uh, yeah, I hundred percent agree. Yeah. <laughs> Mama is not mad at that. Um, Tulane ends up barely losing to number sixteen ranked uh, South Florida twenty eight to thirty four. But you um, guys, it wasn't it wasn't close. It was it was okay. thirty four to seven. Correct. Midway through the third, so it wasn't okay. like correct. It wasn't it nearely 14. close. Right. I mean, basically, Let's USF real. pulls in their second string, puts them in there. But at the same time, I'm scared at Tulsa or at Tulane because <laughs> I, I mean, I'm scared of Tulane because they're clearly better than Tulsa. Yes. Well, they put up 62 on Tulsa, and Tulsa just mm, But yeah, Tulane doesn't scare yeah. me. Tulane doesn't scare me. All right. It truly doesn't because – Okay. I, what scares me more is Kyle Postma. What scares me more scares is having more is Kyle a uh, shotgun option team with D'Onofrio. No, yeah. I, I, yeah. Okay. I think we're going to – I mean, what's, what scares me is that we're just not going to adjust. We're not going to adjust in the yep. second half. I mean, just, yep. it's going to be like Memphis he all over, it. and it's going to be like Tulsa. It. All, that's just – that's <laughs> – <Dude>. that's, that's, <laughs> 
Watch the peg legs. I'm not even. That's two weeks away. Let's yeah, all right. so true. <laughs> Yeah. Next, we've got uh, number 20, UCF, beating Navy. Oh, a Very game. good game, Damn though. Game. Um, yeah. 31 to 21. Um, I'm so glad we're not playing UCF this year. And oh, yeah. um, Navy is still pretty damn good, and I'm going to be really ex- still good. scared about had, Black Friday. Yeah. Uh, AB go yeah, off. He's out. Like, yes. He came he's back out. without – I don't know what happened to him. Dude. Might have been his leg or something like that. Okay. I'm not exactly he sure. He was walking Ooh. around, though. 25 yeah. yards for 126 yards. Uh, or 25 carries for 126 mm-hmm. yards and a touchdown. It's yeah. very impressive. Um, then next, why did this have to happen? <laughs> so UConn, our, is... our pretty much consensus bottom two team of the entire season goes and beats Tulsa. Not even in a close way. Tulsa barely put bo- points on the board in the fourth quarter. Scores. Right. Yeah, yeah it, this was UConn all, the entire game. The entire game. So disgusting. It, it is disgusting. You know, you don't. How, do, you, how does the U, U of H coaching staff let this let that game happen? And then this is just more proof of how bad Tulsa was. It, what but, is going on internally? But transitive I, property doesn't work in college football. You can't well, say you can't co- say that. OK, uh, you can't. Comes, here comes Tim with his transitive you can't. property. It doesn't blah, work. Blah, blah, blah. Anyways, our coaching, is Syracuse, our coaching staff sucks. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to throw it out there. They suck. And a lot of guys' heads need to roll if major ones keep his job. It's not going to happen. We don't have the money for that. We're okay. going to fire a lot of uh, We're not going to fire anybody at the end people. of the day. They're going to get fired. There's going to be a lot of people who get fired. Be, no. yeah. They're really, <laughs> yes. Put, I'll put, Tillman is going to be like, I'll we're put, firing people. I'll put five on it in a very Houston way. At least three assistants will be fired this year. Wrong. <laughs> way wrong. Way wrong. Okay. <laughs> Way wrong. If no one gets money, we have wrapped up in the staff, dude. Bullshit. If Couture is out there, it was hey, more money, more money before. No, yeah, it was way more money before. Four. So people's heads need to roll. In my opinion, that's what I what I see happening. Yep. Or okay. Tillman will come in and throw more money just to get him out. All right. I hope so. Does he have he time that for that? Is, I, mean, I was going to say, does he have time to dude, even do that? Like, like I said, point. he was watching the – he was following the UH game on his phone and did not look like a happy man during game two of the LCS. Yeah. We're getting pegged by Tulsa. Well, the next pegging comes from <laughs> uh, Army, who is now 6-2. and two. Uh, Going bowling. That's going bowling. Army. Yeah. He's already accepted the Armed Forces Bowl. Yep. Hot damn for beating Temple. Um, another hard L for the American Athletic Conference. Dude. Um, we got ha- awful. Hashtag do better. Uh, that's all do, I do. do we what's crazy, too, I forget, is is Temple was our champion last year. Yeah. Yeah. And they're yeah. now three and five, losing Army. Do, do we really deserve to be having that power six flag all over the place? Like, is this, is it, I don't know, as a conference, y- if that yes. is. Yeah. Uh, oh, t- compared to the other G5s, yes. Compared to the Mountain and we West. Have, we do have three USA. ranked teams. Yeah. And yeah. you got to keep the in bad mind. The thing is right now is that the conference compared to like two years ago is very top heavy. Yes. Like yeah. the top five are really good and the rest are just, it's awful. Our top five would beat any other G4 teams. Correct. Oh, any yeah. other top five G4 teams. I yeah, think so. G4 that, for sure. uh, coined on the Shock the World podcast. Yeah, I think our top five. Dude, who in Mountain West outside of Boise would you be scared about? And San Diego State. State. San Diego State just <laughs> yeah. got okay, those two. <laughs> those two, though. Fresno, right. UNLV. Fresno? Like, Fresno's I mean, good. good. I, think, fine, yeah. I think Temple could whoop on um, Fresno and UNLV. Oh. No. Marchie? The boy Marchie? Yeah. Oh. I don't know oh, about that. I do. Bro, no. They just lost the Army. Yeah. Well, let's jump on to the next <laughs> I don't one. I shit. The Army's 6 and 2 or not. <laughs> the Army. I hear you. So, next we got SMU beating the Binturongs. Um, 31 to yeah. 28. Yep. Uh, having a tough one. Um, you know, this makes our win against them sort of look a little really, bit less. I was really, really hoping they were going to lose because we had some people from SMU fans running their nice little mouth about uh, about us. Our followers? Our followers. Mm-hmm. And what they I think is follow. funny is that, still follow. It's okay. is that SMU uh, put out a video saying we're just going to leave this here, and it was nothing but highlights from a loss <laughs> against yeah, us. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, like why yeah. would they do that? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't – SMU, you suck. And also that one lady that keeps tweeting at us, you know who you are if you watch. <laughs> <laughs> Get off my Twitter feed. <laughs> Salty boys. Oh, and with that, we will talk about our peg leg James Pirates. James' favorite team in the conference. Getting the W over BYU. The okay, worst I'm, BYU I'm team. I, <laughs> this might be the worst BYU team in all of history. It's one of the worst. Yeah. This, this is, is sad. It's not Lavelle Edwards. BYU. Team. It's not. No. Uh, Homeboy went to Virginia. No. Bronco. Bronco. This is bad. 
East Carolina made it happen, though. They were tied at the first uh, at the end of the first half, and then sort of ran away with it after that. And then, you know, overall, American Athletic Conference still looking. You know, at least we got that win over BYU, an out of conference man. one. But BYU yeah. is BYU really is awful. Bad. We needed Temple why to get that win. Why can't we play this BYU team? I know. That, that <laughs> yeah, is. exactly. Yeah. Why do we get like one of the best BYU teams in and, a long and, time? And Did we play times. BYU? 13. Oh, our here year was 13. 13. And 14. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So with that, I guess we'll go ahead and jump on then to our big matchup recaps. Uh, Fresno State, San Diego State, whammy. Wow. Uh, Fresno yeah. State, I didn't even see that this happened. Fresno yeah, State bad. ends up stomping San Diego State 27 to 3. Yep. Um, Hockett ends up running for three touchdowns and was the first Fresno State player with three rushing touchdowns in a single game since 2007, uh, 2009, which is very impressive. Um, after that, next, Boise State continues to do Boise State things, even though, I mean, I think Wyoming is a decent team overall. Um, ends up winning 24-14. to 14. Um, Next, we've got... Um, the Peganing. The Peganing. <laughs> oh, I was so glad to see this and just yeah. overall <laughs> proved how much overrated or how overrated usc is her name ends up stomping usc Dude, um, it's not even close. 49 to 14 it was I, all I it was all happen. rushing predominantly from oh, their yeah. name they yeah. rushed up one side and down Home the boy other is trying to save his job oh, it's saved he's it's he's saved good. now he's good yeah. now Dude, he's good they, he's good uh, I think Colin Coward made an interesting point the other day. Like whoever wins this game between USC and Notre Dame, and they're look, he was looking at schedule. Notre Dame plays nobody the rest of the no. year. USC played nobody the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah. like they're going to find themselves regardless in the playoff. And Notre Dame could very well end up there. Yeah, they could. If a couple more, a couple more teams take some L's. Yep. And they yep. have one loss, and that one loss is to Georgia, and that's a good loss. Yep. Yeah. Like I mean, they could very well end up there. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> Um, and with that, we'll go ahead and uh, talk about the last one of our uh, big Ooh. five matchups, and that's going to be mm. the utter throttling of Michigan by Penn State. Dude, I'm, so, on, I gotta be, I'm on the Penn Barclay. State train, dude. I got to be honest with you. It was really shitty of Jim Harbaugh to say, yeah, that running back's really good. Like you don't know who Saquon Barkley is. He needs to chill. He's such a prick. He, needs to chill. he is a Jim prick. Harbaugh. I hate He's him prick. so I hate much. Him. I, you know, I, that's what he does, though. It's what, it's what, yeah. That's what he but does. But you know what? Yeah. Hey, congratulations, Michigan. He's your guy. You can beat everybody in Big Ten except for Penn State, Michigan State, and Ohio State. And it's, like, hard, for them to be, it's hard for them to beat uh, Wisconsin, too. Like I yeah. saw on yeah. game day, someone wrote a sign that said, if you're reading this, like the Drake thing, Jim Harbaugh has still not won the Big Ten. Yep. yep. So they're paying what nine I mean, or ten million dollars a year oh, for a nine and three team. That is a lot of money, but you do have to realize they did have they were he when he took over they were real bad. So, um, but I mean, in I my opinion, I, I thought it was there, I thought it was you know even coming into this next next week, Penn State fell to number three on the AP poll. Fell. What do you mean from number two? Who got number two? Wow, spot? Georgia. I did not see that. They swapped. Uh, mm. I am not as convinced. SEC bias. Yes. Mm. SEC bias. Yeah. So who is Georgia beat? You know why the Georgia moved up? Because Notre Dame beat USC so bad. Yeah. Honestly. Yep. And that was Georgia's Probably. best win to that point. Yeah. Yep. That's a good point. That's the only that's the only rational way I could think about that. Yeah. I don't know. I'm on the Penn State hype train. They look boys like they good. look really good. Yeah. They look like the most like exciting team in college football right now. They had a really and if good any stand. Aggie fan thinks that they're gonna take James Franklin huh? after seeing that atmosphere. <laughs> huh? That atmosphere get, get was out. awesome. Dude, I mean yeah please. that was just Dude, that, that place was, a, was please lit. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Yeah. That nope. looked crazy. We need so some sorry. traditions like that. We that, need I mean that's yeah, yeah that was that well they're trying to do that with the black got a hundred years of that. I'm, I agree. Oh, my. Mm-mm. Yeah. That's what happens that's when you sick. run a marketing campaign properly. Correct. Well, that's what happens when you just have a lot of tradition. They have yeah. some of the best tradition. Oh, I mean, they're just school. an older, I mean, yeah, older school. Yeah, yeah, they've got for a lot. sure. Also, it's the, like it's cold and like people, studies show that, you know, uh, fans, uh, sports fans tend to go to more events when it's cold outside. Also, we're not in the, I mean, they're not in the fourth largest city in America. Like, right. yeah, we've yeah. just got a lot yeah. of battles. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're we've got the World right Series. And, I mean, it's just, yeah, yeah exactly. It's, yeah. Woof. So, well, we've got a couple of fan questions. You want me to get into that? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, oh, first boy. one comes from, oh man, I'm not even going to try and bad? change this, toss this guy's name. No, they're not bad. Uh, it comes from our good friend, GMS Edits. First okay. question, what do you think the defense needs to fix for the USF game? Uh, Mark D'Onofrio. <laughs> More specifically, uh, what do you mean? Uh, Dude, if cutting, you have a lead, you like, gotta you gotta continue to attack on defense. Exactly. You can't there was no like there, we weren't attacking it zone was coverage and play back, not to and no lose, break man. defense, and it looked like yes. trash in my opinion. It it yeah. reminded me just all over like uh, I just I miss Orlando. <laughs> yes. How did our defense allow 42 points in the second half? Also from GMS edits. Um, uh, playing not to lose and the offense not being able to wipe their own butt. Per pretty se. much. Even though they did score three touchdowns, but I mean, it is what it is, dude. And then also, when your kickoffs after they run one back, we're giving them a forty, you know, forty yard line, yeah, you know, field position every single time. I mean, they only have to go sixty yards exactly. instead of mm-hmm. eighty or eighty plus. I kind mean, of a. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry to mean to cut you no, off. No, no, no. I was, I was done after that. <laughs> it's a horse. Um, I'm tired of talking about an this. interesting question uh, that actually I kind of liked. It's my favorite one. What is your favorite game day food? Oh, mm. I have two. I'll let you guys first. I have two first. I Jameson, know. I don't know. Y'all go. Okay, my favorite one at baseball games. Okay, oh. are hot dogs. Oh, for sure, without a doubt, without a doubt, without without a doubt. hands down. Dog. Yeah, hot dogs. Gotta Dollar dog night. I'm there. Oh, yeah. period. Yeah. Uh, but for U of H games, my favorite food because I don't explore a whole lot. The fries. The oh, waffle fries are delicious. Fries are pretty good. Yeah. I don't know why. I just, I really like them. I but, really like them. Um, game day. Food. I, I, we normally eat before we go into the stadium at our tailgate. And I got to say, I really, really love wings. Boneless wings in particular. Mm, that was good. Um, they're really four tailgates. Yeah, no, I, they're they're very really expensive. expensive. Favorite hey, game day expensive. food would be... Uh, Pizza Shiner Light too. Blonde for sure. Shiner Light Blonde. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is by far my favorite. <laughs> I remember I remember specifically during the Memphis game, we had like boxes of uncold ones, and then there's I was just scrambling through the cooler find, trying to find a cold one and it didn't happen. So I had to drink something else. Lo Siento, my friend. At least like 30 minutes. Lo Siento. Not happy. We're gonna try to change that soon. <laughs> uh for me, favorite game day food. You know, I I I just I, I don't eat a lot during the game day because I'm too busy drinking. So yes. I, I would say <laughs> smart man. I mean, honestly, I'm not, I mean I'm not gonna lie. I just like I, I and the, the food inside the stadium is so expensive. And I, I would say my favorite food so far. We've uh, I had uh, uh, buddies of mine from SVA because we kind of partner with them a lot. Uh, they will make some really good fajitas, and we'll do Ooh, we'll make some fajitas. fajitas and I was gonna stuff say like that. Yeah, or something I was gonna say like yeah. It's, it's just it's that, that it's that Tex Mex that uh, I like. Yeah, I like before the going into the too. game. All yeah, awesome. yeah. I'm well, kind of cool. hungry now. <laughs> yeah. You guys have anything else you want to taught up before we end up no. uh, closing no, this guy I, out? I got it. I got it again. I'm good to go. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, <laughs> thanks, man. I appreciate it. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. So again, remember, guys, if you want to go ahead and check out Coup Crew, you can go ahead and check them out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Yep. And then what is the actual website where they can go and t- check everything out? Yeah. So the website is kukru.org. Cool. Uh, yeah. So you just pop on over there. We have a lot of information out there. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. cool. Man. Yeah. Thanks. We again, appreciate, guys. It. appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, with that, I guess we'll go ahead and jump on and you guys can check us out in the next episode where we preview our game against UCF. So uh, I US, think with that US, one, yeah, yeah, USF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. With that one, God. we're going to sign off. Yeah, we're we're out. Signing off. All right. Go Cougs. Go Cougs. <laughs>